Assalamualaikum Sayyidi Walaikum Assalam Sayyidi, what's the difference between the fire of knowledge versus the fire of hell? The fire of knowledge or the fire of hell? <clears throat> the fires of reality is that to enter into the Divine the fire. One the sun to dress you or one the sun to burn you. But both of them have a reality. So it means that how much we take from the sun? We take our vision, photosynthesis, we take our breath, photosynthesis, we take uh, all our life on this earth because of the sunlight. And at the same time if for some reason you don't have the proper vehicle and you're cast into the sun, it will burn you. So everything has a reality and an approach. So we already described in the talk. That if you're, you're coming with your bags trying to get into the heavens, so what happened to Bani Israel when Nabi Musa was telling them, look we got to leave Pharaoh, we got to leave this world and we have to go to the Promised Land. For 40 years he dealt with Pharaoh and each time his people were tortured because they really weren't ready for the Promised Land. And when they finally after 40 years of torture from Pharaoh and he convinced finally to set off to the Promised Land, they took all their possessions. They took all their gold, all their furniture, everything loaded on camels to go to the Promised Land. That's why they were running so slow that Pharaoh caught up to them and Nabi Musa had to open the sea just to get them to pass safely. Means they didn't want to give up the possessions. If you're going to the Promised Land you don't need the possessions. But if your material desire is so strong then Promised Land is what for you? And again they even took all the gold and when Nabi Musa went up to the mountain to spend time with Allah they fashioned their gold into a cow to worship it <coughs> on the way to the Promised Land already been saved from the parting of the sea, they're on the side of the Promised Land now and in the Promised Land they're… As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. building a golden calf to worship. Again Allah showing, look these people their desire not changing. They want their material desire here is not going to work. So Allah inspired them, build it, open the earth and swallow them all up in it. But the rule of it is then this desire has to be cut. These understandings have to be cut and the servant has to yearn for this Divinely love to move into the Divinely Presence. When they move with love into the Presence and slow and gradually Allah will prune out what's not necessary in life, the relationships not necessary, the things and people, possessions that are not necessary, Allah take them away. And in the end they are in the condition Allah wants them in. But somebody coming cold into the situation with all their goods it's going to seem like a fire for them if they have to be cleaned in a grave with all the possessions, all the, the garbage that people brought into this life with no cleaning, no cleansing, 
no, no purification and they go straight into the grave. Can you imagine how horrific that must be just to separate people from that? So the understanding of hell is what people put upon themselves and how to separate that and to clean them and return them to a state of purity. So I see people who tattoo themselves all over themselves, right? And then they have remorse. Then they show the guy lasering off his tattoos, screaming more painful than when he got the tattoo. Isn't that ironic? That he took a certain amount of pain to put the tattoo on but he said it was more painful to burn it off and it's not even completely burned off as a sign for them that you know th these things have a, have a penalty. If burning it off on earth is that painful, if Allah has to do the laser surgery in the grave because you're not going up there like that, <coughs> what do you think it's going to be like? So everything is real, everything has its proof on this earth. You want to mark yourself here? No problem. You'll have remorse when you can't get a good job and you look like a gangster and a, like a cult member. Then you have to burn it off and it burns and it's painful here. Imagine when Allah says, you know I love you, I want to give you a beautiful paradise, we got to take those off. So everything, everything has its symbol on this earth and this reality upon this earth. We pray that Allah give us the, the wisdom to understand it inshaAllah. <coughs> As alaykum shaykh Wa alaykum as salam When you become the fire, do you lose all sense of self? Is that a question or a statement? Question. <laughs> you lose your sense of self? These are hal and experiences that somebody may go through but the the you cannot be in a perpetual state of the fire but what they're teaching is that in your meditation and the khash when Allah wants to unveil at times or in their experiences they, they go through a hal and an experience that the fire and they enter into a Divine love and they enter into that oneness of Divine love and they feel the flame of that love. So it's not something that uh, you can be put into words and not to be understood until they experience that. But they feel the burning of what we're talking about walking into the flame. Once they're in the flame that has its own experience as Bardan wa salaman they feel the Divine love and ishq and the whole world may be spinning around them but when they're in that flame of Divine love Allah stabilizes them. No matter what's going on on the outside Allah holds them to be stable and they find that to be cool and peaceful no matter what uh, is happening on the outside. But entering into the flame is where people are having difficulties, where you know yelling, screaming, all these different things that happen and in jobs and works, whatever the testing is, walking into it is where they're having the difficulty. Once they entered into it and Allah gave them a support in which to sustain then it's Allah's cool and peacefulness means that their love for Prophet dresses them and is their great stabilizer that keeps them upright. So they show like these coast guard boats. Most boats if you hit them with a wave they flip upside down, that's it everybody's in the ocean. But those boats that have been reinforced for that purpose, the coast guard boat they keep flipping it and it keeps coming back up, they flip it it keeps coming back up. So means Allah will design them and begin to sanctify them and it, whichever way they're twisted they keep coming back up inshaAllah and that has its own, its own reality. But walking into the flame that's, that's the poetry, like a moth enter the fire and it will burn everything. So if you see little moths for some reason they are very attracted to candles. And they don't even think that, hey if I go any closer I'm going to burn and most times they go in and they actually begin to burn from the fire. But like a moth to the flame we have to have that love for the Divine 
I would imagine that is a symbol of why that creature acts like that. So that they have a symbol of this love so that people can watch and see if that creature can do that, I'm sure I think I can do that. And that's our lives in which we want to be proactive and walk towards our destiny and our protection. What's coming on earth is worse though, before people didn't have to choose. But now the devils are telling you they're coming after people, you know sorcerers are coming after people. What they have in store for people is far more difficult. So the ones whom are proactive they understand that and they say, it's better that I fix myself, sanctify myself before people whom have no mercy in their hearts are planning on whatever they're planning. Allah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum salaam. So that even the people who had the faith and protection that these tornadoes had nothing to do with them. So these are, are very, very, very powerful teachings that when you do the zikr, you play the zikr and, and these things that come into these areas, the, the jinn and the jan, not even jinn, jan that are over 100 feet in height. They'll come to the house of that servant and immediately put a protection all around them that anything coming won't even dare come into that vicinity. So these are not something that can be understood by people but it's a, it's a reward for people who have faith and they put their action where their faith is. You know they're committed, their faith is not tongue only by tongue, it's by they committed their heart with faith. Allah has many tools and, and and things available. So these tornadoes, these other things that people are extremely frightened of is nothing. If Allah send one of His servants to guard them, they're jal, they're hundred feet in height and they merely just stand there because these other ones are, are just coming and traveling back and forth. There's nothing in comparison to these, these very huge beings and they can protect an entire area. Even if, if the servant is a strong believer, these Tornadoes may be coming as uh, Naqshbandis and they start to follow them, <laughs> they start to, to do zikrs around their vicinity. So yeah this, this heavenly kingdom is, is, is full of might and majesty. So it has its rewards for people who believe, a time will come and their belief will be rewarded by the, the extent of what they see of protection and, and realities. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam uh, wa Sayyidi, how do we balance between planning for the future and living in the present? Is it not important to plan for future in case we face difficult times? Planning for the future has a, a limited plan. Worrying about the future is what we're talking about. So yeah, I think that that should be clear. When we talk everything is common sense. So we're not extreme people. So the question should be using your common sense. When we talk about the future, either you're worried about the future then you understand what I talked about. Planning for the future is like say, I'm not going to go get my groceries for tomorrow because Allah will send me… No, you're going to starve to death. You have to buy your groceries because you're going to be eating for the next week. That's nothing to do with that. Having to be fearful of the future, how am I going to do it, where are my kids going to go to school, how are we going to make our money, how are we going to do all these things and then they're so absorbed by their fear they can't do anything. And what are you fearful for? The one who fed you today will feed you tomorrow if you're good and you're doing your practices. So alhamdulillah but to daily do your planning, everyone has to plan in lives. So don't worry about the past, you can't change it. And definitely don't be scared of the future, it's not in your hands. But busy yourself today with good actions, go out and feed somebody, do your zikr, do your meditation, do your practices and tomorrow should be a very blessed day. If today you did the right thing, tomorrow you should see its rewards, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. How to be more proactive rather than reactive? How do we wake ourselves when we start becoming heedless? Be a strong person and have discipline. 
means that you, you, your mindset is you make intention. So we said before, write down what you want, write your last chapter in life. Everything that you want you have to write it so that it manifests. Don't write notes of bad things, don't do journaling where you write all the bad, 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 then all those are going to manifest with horrific creatures. But write the manifestation of what you're asking for. What you write you have to make an intention, look at it and every day work towards that manifestation. What do you want next year? What do you want in two years? What do you want in three years? And what's the last chapter of your life? I want to die and I spend a death, the love of Prophet I want a lot of people at my grave, I want people to remember, I want Allah to be happy with me. Write your last chapter and that one you post on your wall so that you see it like frame it, this is the last chapter of my life. And then next time you make a decision and you go for this or you go for that deal or you go then look at your chapter and say, oh my god I'm never going to reach that chapter doing this. So that that keeps the focus in life of how am I going to reach that last chapter. And then the other one is that daily manifestation, what am I manifesting in one year, where do I expect to be spiritually, what I want to manifest in my life. And then you try to work towards that goal, so everything has to be understood and we have to be focusing. Imagine uh, trying to make a building where you didn't draw what the building's looking like, right? The people who manifest and, and architects and contractors, what does the building look like? I have no idea. How many feet is it? I have no idea. Uh, what are the floors going to look like? I have no idea, that would be the scariest building in the world to, to try to even live in because I don't know how they built it, who built it, why they built it. So our life is same thing, you're, you're trying to manifest your life which is most important thing in your, your existence. Write it down, what is it that you, you want to achieve? Look at it, see if this halal, this is what Allah wants and you write it all down and then every day, Ya Rabbi inshaAllah let this to be what's good for me. And the last chapter most important that this is going to be my death and this is what I want for my death and what I had achieved to reach that death, inshaAllah. Then we live a life in trying to accomplish that inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa Are the elements of nature, air, water, fire and earth portals or help in creating portals? The fire as portal for Nabi Musa, the gel having fire in one hand and water in other, and CERN is underground. I don't know, that's kind of a push with different things, yeah. But the portals, we, we've done enough on the portals. So we want to know everyone say, okay, is the paint a portal? Is this a portal? Is the, is the banana a portal? Because <laughs> everyone's going to ask everything, is a portal? We, we, we did the portals enough. Now we're in the flame, so let's focus on the, the flame and the fire. So each element has to be mastered. It was a good question but I don't want the next question coming about portals. So we, we, we did the portals, we kind of burned that out. But now in the reality of this cave we're entering into a fire. So out of the element and each element in your body has to be mastered, your water so if you read the meditation book, it's in the meditation book your four elements, your water is your angelic reality. So you have to master your angelic reality, your water has to be clean. Don't drink and don't eat anything that would make your water to be contaminated. So when you take alcohol you kill the angelic reality within you because the truth and falsehood they don't mix. That's why the, the water of your reality is so angelic that it takes on whatever you put on it, it's clean, it's pure. So if you throw garbage into it, it completely takes over the property of that water. If you throw something beautific upon it then they will multiply that beautific reality. So if you drink zamzam in your water it makes all your water to be zamzam. And zamzam is so angelic that they say that if they put one drop of zamzam in water it makes the entire water zamzam. That's angelic reality of zamzam. 
So pour a little bit of zamzam in water, mix that whole water zamzam because those are angels in that water. When they get the zamzam water they say, Amin and they make the whole thing to be zamzam. So this is an angelic reality of water. The angelic reality or the reality of your dirt is your clay reality. So your dirt reality should be grounded, you have to be a grounded person. So water and dirt can grow and that's why dirt is allowed to put out fire, tayammum. When you don't have water get clean soil, get little Tupperware from the beach, the sand with the no animal has done anything on it or the Shia have a moor in which they put their head from Karbala, the soil of Karbala, you take that more like a, like a soap and you put it in a thing and everywhere you go you just rub a little of the clean soil of Karbala and to purify yourself from fire. So dirt puts out fire, water on dirt makes things to grow. So then your physicality has to be clean, has to be grounded. Then the fire is a, is a difficult element. The fire has to be controlled. If you don't control your fiery nature then the shaitans and jinn enter into the servant and make them to be very angry. As a result their fire becomes out of control and they can control themselves. If they can control their fire with the water of their wudu, that's why they're continuously drinking good and making wudu and with the, the, the soil and the dirt element of their body that is grounded and clean. As a result of the dirt and the water their fire nature will be brought down and that becomes then the fire of zeal to do and to conquer things, not the fire of anger to burn like a volcano. But they have an immense power and inner zeal to accomplish. As a result of mastering these four elements the element of Divine breath will enter into the servant with the breath of God and that's when the air element is the breath of the Divine upon them. So the real airbenders, firebenders all of these are the servants of God whom Allah give them a control over the elements within their being and their being is the most powerful being created by God if they open to what Allah has wanted for them inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Are there illusionary fires? What's an illusionary fire? <laughs> Is there a non-heavenly fire? Yeah, devils. Shaitans, their, their fire deals and their fiery shaitanic uh, creatures, definitely. And they say, well how, how, how shaitan can burn from fire if he's fire and there's a different type of fire. So the, this fire of, of heavens is an immensely powerful fire that will burn all fires. The fire that they use of bad character and bad elements to harm and to harm people that's something from shayateen. So that, that's something different. A divinely fire is something that can't be understood. But what the, the guardians of, of realities they understand that, that the, Allah's fire is not like any fire from this earth, it's a light and it's immensely heated light. That's why it come upon the servant and they enter into an ecstasy. But trying to move towards that is very difficult. So now people look at the sun and they think it's not approachable but that's incorrect. Actually they can enter into the sun but they haven't the understanding of how. Right from a distance they say, oh anything approach too close you're going to burn. Even our planet if it gets too close it becomes heated. But Allah created a way to enter into that sun. If you know the way to enter into the sun then, bulya nahu kuni bardam wa salama and they enter in cool and peaceful into that fire. And they even see now these ships entering into that, that they enter close into the sun and they take the energy of its plasma and then they go. So 
everything has a degree of knowledge, we are not there yet. But people on this earth same thing, what they understand of something until they approach it, it can be very painful looking, oh I don't want to run, come to this purification and I don't want this process. But Allah as they begin to approach makes it to be cool and peaceful for the servant and a beautific energies and beautific lights dress the servant as they approach that reality inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah How to be accepting and peaceful with the pruning? Sabr tawassal bi haqqa wa tawassal bi sabr how to have patience when Allah's pruning you, cutting out things and that's why we say every, everything is testing, imtihan that our life is about testing. When we know and we confirm within ourselves everything is a testing then we understand that only God wants the best for me. So what comes into my life it's blessed, what leaves my life God didn't want it, didn't need it. So it's all in His hands and that's when you understand that He only wants the best and takes out what's not necessary. But it requires patience because during that process there's grief, there's sadness, there's all sorts of emotions. The servant has to have all of the practices, this way can't be accomplished if they don't meditate, they don't connect, they don't do the salawats, they don't attend the zikrs, these are all the tools. So when the person is just getting upset with everything and then they sit in the zikr, they do their salawats, they do their muraqabah, what happens? They feel a tranquility come into their heart so that that test wasn't so difficult. So these are the, the tools and the gifts that Allah gave to us so that to make all of this more possible and, and tolerable inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Ameen. MashaAllah very good questions, thank you very much to everyone, alhamdulillah blessed month. Last uh, 12 days and even beyond many urs of the Naqshbandi shaykhs that they, they went with an immense love to meet their Lord and to be in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad was a great gift in their passing on such a holy month. So Allah made this month to be immensely powerful, immensely blessed. We pray that Allah dress us all, bless us all. By means of this holy month grant all the prayers of what people are asking for, grant healing for all the people whom are asking for their healings and that Allah grant us all and najat as salvation through this immense love and from the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and save ourselves, our family and our communities inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.